Hi everyone, uh, this is Mrs. G.A. and today we're going to talk about angle measures. So first thing I want to talk about is what is a radian? So I think we all know what a degree is, it's a way to measure angles, um, but radian is another unit for angle measurement. And I want to uh, first talk about well how do they come up with a radian or how do they determine what angle makes a radian? So a radian is defined by the angle that's made when the arc length matches the radius. So imagine here, here's the radius of our circle. So imagine that I took this distance and it was a string and I laid that string around my circle. So let's say it goes about this far. This angle, the angle that that creates, um, this is how they defined what the measurement of a radian would be. So again, the measurement of a radian is when the angle, uh, it's the angle formed when the arc length matches the radius of your circle. So now that we know um, what a radian is or how it was um, determined, uh, let's talk about the relationship between degrees and radians. So the easiest conversion between degrees and radians is at 180 degrees which of course is a half circle, 180 degrees, is equal to pi radians. So typically we don't write the word radians, we actually don't write anything for the unit. So if you don't see units written, it's implied that it's in radians. So to convert um, between um, degrees and radians, we're going to use dimensional analysis and we're just going to use this conversion factor. So 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Okay, so let's try this first one together. So here we have 45 degrees and they would like us to convert it to radians. So with dimensional analysis, we start with something like this and we create like a little um, sideways t-chart. So here, if we are currently in degrees, the only way to cancel out the unit degrees is by having degrees on the bottom because this is like a fraction. If you have the, a common um, thing in the numerator and denominator, they cancel out. So I'm going to put 180 degrees on the bottom and then I'm going to put my radian conversion on top. So 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. Since these are equal, anything over itself is equal to 1. So I'm really just multiplying by a really strange form of 1. So when I do this, now you can see that I have degrees on the top and the degrees on the bottom. They will cancel out, and then we just multiply right across the top. So 45 pi over 180 um, radians. And then this, we're just going to simplify to pi over 4. So we have pi over 4 radians. 45 degrees is equal to pi over 4 radians. And remember, we don't typically write, um, write the word radians for the units. We just leave it as the measurement. Okay, now let's try this next one. 2 pi over 3 radians to degrees. So 2 pi over 3 I'm going to write the radians on top over 3. So if you have a unit, the unit is going to be on top to start. Um, but notice we do have a fraction, so it's 2 pi over 3 radians. Since I have radians in the numerator, I want radians in the denominator to cancel it out. So this time, I'm going to put pi radians in the denominator. Um, however, I can't just divide by pi radians, but I can... Um, multiply by a form of 1. So if I put 180 degrees on top, since they're equal, again, anything divided by itself is 1. So I'm just multiplying by a form of 1. Um, here you see that the radians um, unit will cancel out, and now the unit I'm in is degrees. So then again, we're going to um, also cancel out pi, and then I'm going to multiply across the top and divide by 3. And then we're going to simplify that to 120 degrees. So again, the whole purpose of dimensional analysis is to create um, a structure where you can easily cancel out the units um, by having the same units in the numerator and the denominator. 
All right, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can use dimensional analysis to convert um, 15 degrees to radians and then 3 pi over 4 radians to degrees. All right, let's check here. So here we have 15 degrees. So to cancel out the units, degrees needs to go on the bottom. So pi radians goes on the top. And then we just multiply across the top, divide by the bottom, and simplify. And again, you don't need to actually write the word radians. Typically, we don't, but this is just to show that it is in radians. Um, so here we have 3 pi over 4 radians. So the unit starts in the numerator, so we need to get in the denominator to cancel out. So we do our little conversion factor here, and then we multiply and simplify, and we get 135 degrees. Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, what's called standard position of an angle. So the standard position of an angle um, is defined when the angle, uh, as an angle whose vertex is at the origin and whose initial side is the positive x-axis. So um, here's the starting initial side, and then we put another angle here, and then this angle is in standard form. So again, we are always going to measure it from here to here. This is called the terminal side. This is the initial side. And this angle is in standard form. So you can write an angle like this. Sometimes you'll even see something like this. And if you ever see um, like a line that goes all the way around plus some, it means that that angle has made a full um, 360 degree rotation and some so that's what this type of symbol means and then you can even have a negative angle which is shown when you connect your initial side going um, clockwise so this would be a negative angle measurement but all of these angles are in standard position and remember we measure it from the positive x-axis and you follow the arc to help you determine what that measure is um, now we're going to talk about what are called co-terminal angles. So co-terminal angles are angles that have the same standard position and they end in the same place. So they have the same terminal side. So it's two angles that would look the same if you drew them, but they actually have different measurements. So um, the way, the only way that can possibly um, occur is if they are a full at least one full revolution apart. So you're either doing a full, at least one full revolution forward or one full revolution backwards. And there's actually an infinite number of coterminal angles for any standard position angle. So here there, uh, we're going to try to find a positive and negative coterminal angle for the following angle. So here theta equals 45 degrees. So um, this angle would look something like this. So 45 degrees is approximately right here. So we'll call this theta. So we're saying, hey, we want another angle that lands in the same place but is not 45 degrees. So one way to do that is to do another full rotation and then go back to that initial spot. So we can say 45 degrees plus a positive full revolution, so 365 degrees and we get 405 degrees. So this angle will land in the same spot. It looks exactly the same, but it has a different measurement. And we can actually find a negative coterminal angle um, by subtracting 360 degrees. So we can do a full revolution in the other direction. And this gives us negative 315 degrees. Now, of course, these are not the only two possible answers. We could keep adding 360 over and over until we find one we like or keep subtracting 360 over and over as long as you understand that it has to be at least one full revolution apart. So let's see if we can do the same for um, theta equals 2 pi over 3. So it's the same process, um, but just so you know, 2 pi over 3 is somewhere around here because here's 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, and then 3 pi over 3. Um, so we want an angle that lands in the same place but has a different measurement. So instead of adding 360, since our angle is in radians, let's add 2 pi. 
right? Because 2 pi is a full revolution in radians. So this is 6 pi over 3, so that would give us 8 pi over 3. So that's another uh, measurement in radians that has the same exact terminal side. So it looks exactly the same as 2 pi over 3 when you draw it in standard form. Now let's see if we can find a negative coterminal angle. So again, start at 2 pi over 3, but this time let's subtract um, 2 pi. So I'm going to subtract 6 pi over 3, and we get negative 4 pi over 3. So that's a negative coterminal angle. Okay, um, so go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find an angle that is um, between 0 and 360 degrees that is coterminal with 1,290 degrees. Okay, let's check our answer here. So here's my original angle. So I try going down by one full revolution and I get 930. That's not between 0 and 360. So I take away another full revolution and I get 570. Not quite small enough. So I need to take away another full revolution and then I can finally land on 210 degrees, which is between um, 0 and 360. But all four of these angles are coterminal. All right, so now we're going to um, talk about some useful formulas that you're going to need to know. Um, so the first one is the arc length formula. So again, let's say we have a circle. So the arc length of a circle can be found by um, multiplying the radius times what's called the central angle. So say you had um, a central angle like this. This is your arc length. So this is what you're trying to find. So your radius times that central angle will give you the measurement of this arc. The area of a sector, so if I colored in this slice of pi, the area of this slice can be found with the formula 1 half r squared times theta, that central angle. Um, the angular speed, so the rate at which your angle is changing, so like imagine maybe um, like a minute hand on a clock going around. The angular speed can be measured uh, with this formula. It's theta divided by time. So your central angle divided by whatever unit of time. And just so you know, we read this Greek letter um, as omega. This Greek letter is read as omega. And last, linear speed. Um, so imagine you have a point on the outside of your circle that's traveling around and you want to figure out, well, how fast is that point traveling? We use this linear speed formula, which is simply S over T. Remember, S is arc length, so it's just arc length divided by your unit of time, and remember, arc length is R theta. And just so you know, this uh, Greek letter is called nu. So that's how you would read that. Now here's a really, really important thing to note. When you're using any of these formulas, theta must be in radians. So that's why it's important to know how to convert from degrees to radians. So again, theta has to be in radians. So we're going to see if we can try to use some of these formulas. So first let's try um, some problems with the arc length formula. Um, so remember, the arc length formula looks like this. Okay, um, so this says find the arc length of a circle with a radius of 10 meters that has a central angle of 30 degrees. So one thing you're going to need to note is that the first thing we need to do is convert from degrees um, to radians. So here we have 30 uh, degrees. We'll put 180 degrees on the bottom and pi radians on the top. And this becomes pi over 6 radians. So now we can find the arc length simply by doing 10 times pi over 6. So our arc length here is um, 10 pi over 6, or we can plug that in to get a decimal approximation. And it is roughly uh, 5.24 meters. All right, let's look at part B. Here uh, they say find the central angle for the, purport, for the portion of the circle whose arc length is 6 and whose radius is 4 meters. So we're going to use that same formula, but here we're solving for a different part. So the arc length is 6, 
So we have 6 equals our radius, which is 4, times theta, which is the central angle we're trying to find. So theta equals 3 over 2 radians. And I know it looks kind of weird to say uh, to have an angle that looks like this, but it's perfectly fine to leave your answer in radians. Okay, let's see if we can now try an area of a sector problem. So remember our formula for this, for the area of a sector, is 1 half times the radius squared times theta, that central angle, in radians. So here, find the area of a sector whose central angle is 60 degrees and whose radius is 3 meters. So again, we're always going to start by converting anything in degrees two radians. So degrees goes on the bottom, so the units cancel out. Pi radians goes on top, and we are left with pi over three radians. So the area is one half times three squared times pi over three. And here, um, let's plug this in. Well, we can get an exact answer, which would be three pi over two meters squared. Or you could get a decimal approximation for that, which would be approximately 4.71 meters squared. And there you have it. Okay, last, let's see if we can try um, this linear and angular speed. So remember, the angular speed can be found by doing your central angle um, divided by your unit of time. And that uh, linear speed can be found by doing your arc length over your unit of time. Remember, arc length is r theta. So this says, a boy rotates a stone um, in a three-foot sling at a rate of 15 revolutions every 10 seconds. Um, find the angular uh, and linear velocities. So for our angular speed, we're going to try to find a way to describe this 15 revolutions every 10 seconds, um, but we just need to find a way to describe 15 revolutions in terms of um, radians. So remember, a revolution is just a full circle, So we, and we know that a full circle in radians is 2 pi. So we do 15 times 2 pi to get 30 pi radians. So this boy is um, slinging the stone at 30 pi radians for every 10 seconds. And if you simplify that, um, our final answer for the angular speed would be 3 pi radians per second. So notice that seconds is in your denominator um, and uh, radians is in the numerator. So it's 3 pi radians per second. So it's really just an angle per given unit of time. Now let's see if we can find um, that linear velocity. So remember the linear velocity, first we can start by doing um, our arc length. So our arc length can be fine with by doing r theta and then we'll do per unit of time. So here uh, it says that it's on a three foot long sling. So that would be our radius, three times 30 pi radians per 10 seconds. So here we have 90 pi over 10, uh, which would be nine pi. And then our units would be feet per second because three is in feet and then our unit of time is seconds, so 9 pi feet per second. All right, um, that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.